to another episode of LoveHorsepower.com. Today we're going to be showing you how to replace the head gasket on this 91 MR2 Turbo. Now the reason we're doing that is because we ran a little too much boost, if there's such a thing, and definitely too much ignition advance from that stock engine computer. Now we're basically going to be following the service manual procedures to take the head gasket off, but with some changes that will make this a lot easier. We're going to start by draining the engine coolant, and while that's draining, taking off the engine hood, strut tower brace, intake pipes leading up to the turbocharger, intercooler pipes, throttle body, EGR, cruise control, and finally, the distributor. So what do you say we get our mechanics gloves on and go get wrenching? Okay, to start off, let's drain out that engine coolant. I like to jack up the front of the car to make it easier to get to the plastic drain plug. Just reach on up in there and unscrew that plug. You don't even need any tools. Then remove the radiator cap in the engine compartment to allow the coolant to flow out more freely. If you want to drain more of the coolant out instead of opening up all the other drain plugs, and believe me, the MR2 has a lot, just take a wet dry vac, put it in reverse, and blow air into where the radiator cap was. This will blow nearly all of the coolant through the front drain. Here, kitty, kitty. Nah, just kidding. Removing the engine hood on the 91 MR2 Turbo is really easy. Assuming you already have the engine rain guard removed, it's just four bolts along with the engine compartment temperature sensor. Removing the engine hood will give you a lot more space to work and it's definitely worth the little effort. When you're done removing the hood, screw those four bolts back into it so you don't misplace them. Next up is to remove the strut tower brace. Pretty straightforward. Just unbolt the two 14mm nuts and two 14mm bolts. Then lift that brace on out. I like to put the bolts and nuts back in so that I don't misplace them. Now it's on to the cruise control. On this MR2 Turbo, we have a water injection kit installed, so the cruise control cover is also the mounting point for our water injection solenoids. The removal process is still the same, however. Just remove the two Phillips screws and then pull that plastic cover off. Let's remove the two 12mm bolts holding the throttle cable onto the throttle body and get that out of the way. Now we can get to the cruise control actuator. Just unbolt the three bolts and move that actuator out of the way. Now let's take off the intercooler pipes leading up to the throttle body. This MR2 Turbo has the Gretti intercooler kit installed, but removal is very similar to a stock MR2. Just loosen the hose clamps and remove the necessary piping so that we can get to that throttle body. Up next, we can remove the second part of the cruise control, which houses the throttle cable pulley. As before, just unscrew the plastic cover with a single Phillips screw. On this MR2, we use that cover to mount the water injection pressure switches. After the cover is removed, just unbolt the two bolts and get that thing out of the way. With the cruise control pulley removed, you can clearly see the passenger side engine mount. We'll have to remove this later to get to that timing belt. Now that we've got all that cruise control stuff out of the way, let's remove the metal intercooler pipe leading from the turbocharger to the intercooler. We'll also have to remove all the hoses attached to the rubber main air intake pipe that connects the flow meter to the turbocharger. Using pliers to compress the hose clamps, disconnect the crankcase vent hose, the air bypass valve return hose, and anything else attached. Then disconnect the intake pipe from the turbocharger and flow meter and pull it on out. Okay, next up we can remove that throttle body. Start by removing the four 12mm bolts holding the throttle inlet pipe in place. 
Then, as always, put those bolts back in so as to not misplace them. Next, remove the throttle bracket, or stay, held in place with the two 12mm bolts and the two long 10mm bolts on the valve cover. Then remove the throttle position sensor connector and the four 12mm bolts holding the throttle body onto the intake manifold. With the throttle body now loose, you can disconnect the cold start injector, two coolant lines, air hose, and EGR tubes. Now pull that throttle body on out and get that thing cleaned up. Don't forget, dirt equals lost horsepower. Having fun yet? I bet. Next up is the EGR. Start by removing the two Allen bolts attaching the EGR metal pipe to the head. These can be really tight, so use some pliers on that Allen wrench and save your thumbs from pain. Now unbolt the two bolts holding the EGR assembly onto the intake manifold. You'll have to use an extension to get to the lower one. Don't forget to remove and replace that paper gasket. Next, remove the spark plug wires from the distributor to get those out of the way and disconnect the EGR bypass valve connector. Unbolt the single 12mm bolt holding the bypass valve assembly onto the intake manifold. Finally, pull that entire EGR assembly out as a single unit and you've got it done. Let's get that passenger side engine hook out of the way. There's some hard to see bolts on this thing, four and all. Here's a shot of the engine hook with the engine out to help you see all those bolts. Okay, to summarize what we've done so far, we started by removing that strut upper brace and draining the engine coolant. Next up, we removed those engine side panels and got that engine hood out of our way. I cannot tell you how much easier of a time you will have without that engine hood in your way. It's just four bolts, so get that thing unbolted. You'll have much easier access to the engine compartment. Next, we start pulling off parts, starting with this intake pipe leading from the flow meter to the turbocharger, and then removing the pipes from the turbocharger to the intercooler, and from the intercooler to the throttle body, including this crossover pipe here that contains our blow-off valve. Next up, we remove the cruise control actuator. It's kind of this nasty looking thing here. We had to get this out of, our, out of the way so that we have easy access to the time belt. Next up, we remove the exhaust gas recirculation assembly and this engine hook with about a million bolts in it. Finally, we unbolted the throttle body. Vroom, vroom. Now I know the position I like my throttle in, wide open. <laughs> now, next up, we'll be removing the distributor, the coolant neck, the Toyota variable induction system actuators, and any of the brackets holding the intake manifold on so that we can get that thing unbolted. 